in this video, I'm going to talk about a couple of different kinds of assistive devices. Um, when people talk about assistive devices, often what we mean is your crutches, your walker, your cane, hiking poles, anything that you need to help you have some independence with mobility. So unfortunately, I have had quite a few hip surgeries, so I actually have quite a stash of crutches and people make fun of me, but I like having options and I actually prefer different crutches in different settings. But I just thought um, I could review just some of the some of the pros and cons that I've seen both both as a physical therapist and both that I've experienced as a patient. So first of all, probably the absolute safest um, or at least most stable, I should say, assistive device would be a walker. People are always asking, they're like, well, can I get one of those rolling walkers with the seats? Those are usually, I, in physical therapy, I consider that a rollator. I don't know if that's a brand, but um, the problem with, a, with those kinds of walkers is that they have four wheels on them. So if you're having, really the people who mostly use those are people who have some trouble with balance or who have limited endurance. You definitely do not want to be on one of those walkers if you have any weight bearing restrictions. So anybody who's post-op or anybody who's trying to limit weight bearing on one of their legs, you definitely don't want a walker with four wheels. Now, probably the most convenient or most standardly provided walkers are called uh, anterior rolling walkers. So basically it's a walker that has two wheels on the front and then two stops on the back. Sometimes you see people put like tennis balls underneath to make it glide a little bit easier. Once again, a walker is super stable. Um, so a lot of times when people benefit from that, if people have some trouble with coordination, trouble with balance, I've personally used a walker post-operatively. The times I've really liked it are sometimes if I'm visiting family and they have like big dogs who might jump on you and animals to trip on. Um, I've used a walker in those situations. I also have found sometimes that early post-op, I like having a walker at nighttime. I find that just as I get tired, that I get a little bit more off balance. Um, if you're taking any pain medications, especially at night and you get to use the bathroom, sometimes I just like having a walker with me. But um, I don't have one of those to show you. I've happily gotten rid of mine, but I do have some different crutches. So the two big styles of crutches that you might see, you might hear people talk about forearm crutches or loft strand crutches, they're sometimes called. So um, I actually have a pair of these. These are, these are not the like standard metal ones that you're, that people generally get in the hospital. Um, these are by Millennial in Motion and the, the, the name doesn't matter at all. It just happens I've tried a bunch of different crutches and these ones happen to feel good with me. Um, one of the reasons I really like them is that they have what we call ergonomic hand grips. So they've kind of got little custom to the right and the left side. I have some trouble with my thumb joints and my wrist joints and I just find that having a custom hand grip a little wider and contoured towards my hand really helps me. I have trouble with more just like straight standard grips. But um, these crutches, it's interesting because it kind of depends on what part of the world you're in. In I've noticed a lot of times in the UK and other areas of Europe that these are most often issued. And I actually even know some hospital systems in the States here where these are issued as the, the normal crutches no matter what your orthopedic condition is. But um, I find that most hospitals here in the States are using more of the underarm crutches. But I think these are a really neat option for people. So the benefits to these kind of crutches are that they're a little bit lighter weight, they're a little bit less bulky. I personally like that um, they have these, these forearm grips. So basically, you know, if I'm, I'll show you, if I'm standing up and I'm walking with them, you know, if I get over to a light switch, I can, reach up and turn off the light switch versus having to put my crutches to the side and then turn off the light switch. So anyway, I found some conveniences. I find that they're easy to carry, you know, you can kind of carry a bag to the side and stuff like that with. I'd say some of the um, considerations for them though is that they do take a little bit more core work, a little bit, so you need a little bit more balance, stability, um, a little bit overall better coordination to be able to use these safely. But, um, I think the other thing I've discovered just as a patient using them is that not no crutches are great with this, but these especially, trying to prop them up against things just can be a little bit of a challenge. I'm, if you're constantly crashing to the floor on me and I'm constantly having to do, you know, a, a reach and grab it up and pick it up. Um, so I think that's a great challenge. You know, once again, you can kind of let it hang, but sometimes these, these dangle and get in the way when I'm trying to, to pick stuff up. 
So um, anyway, just some things to think about, but I personally have been using these most of the time after my most recent hip surgery. I'm allowed to put a little bit more weight through my leg than I have during previous surgeries. And for me, just that little extra weight bearing through the leg improves my balance. And I've just found these to be great to use. As far as other crutches, these are what um, probably a lot of folks here in America see. These are, I'd say, most often issued in US hospitals. Um, these are underarm or axillary crutches, so they go under your axilla. I think the, the benefits of these is that they're a little bit more stable feeling than the, the forearm or the lobster and crutches that I just showed you. Um, these, they're aluminum, they're, these are pretty lightweight, which is also nice, once again, hanging them up against stuff, they, they tend to lean a little bit better than the forearm crutches. I think they're, they're quick and easy to adjust. Um, these especially, I just got this pair, I really like because these little red handles come out and then you can slide it to adjust the, the arms versus having the other styles I've seen and I've worked with, you have to usually take out a screw and it's just a little bit more hassle. But, um, so anyway, that's, you know, the other thing that's nice, these are what's issued in the hospitals. A lot of times they can be rolled into an insurance package um, as a hospital cost. They're, even if you have to buy them on your own, I mean, I, I'm not even sure what you find them for these days, but they're not super expensive, whereas some of the, you know, the millennials I just showed you run about $120 a year in the United States for new ones. The Moby Legs, which I'm going to show you, I think are $160, $170 for new ones, so definitely not cheap. Um, insurance usually will not cover those. So that's definitely a benefit of these is oftentimes insurance will cover them. And a lot of times they'll give you these to leave the hospital. So um, downsides to these is I think for, for me, really the biggest downside is just that it's these straight hand grips. I know a lot of folks with hip dysplasia, a lot of us also have some hypermobility or um, problems with other joints. I personally find this grip just really, really taxing, especially on my thumbs, my wrists. I don't have too many shoulder problems, but I think sometimes people, if they have a lot of shoulder problems, also have issues with these. So um, honestly, that's, the, that's probably what I find is the biggest, the biggest downsides to these. Downside, I'm sorry. Um, the last pair of crutches that I have that have taken me through several other surgeries are Moby Legs. These I see a lot of times with people with hip dysplasia. Uh, the benefits of Moby Legs, I'd say, is they take a little time to get used to. I definitely had to go practice on them. They've got these huge bases and they kind of rock. And I think for some people, when they first try that, they go, ooh, that's just really weird. I don't like that, that sensation. But I found that when I use them a little bit and practice with them, I actually found that these are, they are really, really stable. I just like, these are my, these are my stable safety crutches. These are the ones that I choose um, to use when I'm on uneven surfaces. So especially when I go visit my family who live in rural Wyoming, the, a lot of dirt roads, a lot of rocky driveways, I find that these feel really, really safe. If I have days where heavy winds, which sometimes out here in the Rocky Mountains we do get, I feel these just give me a little bit more stability. Um, things like if there's any snow on the ground, ice on the ground. Once again, the safety thing is do not go out in it, but sometimes you just have to um, for short distances. So once again, I just, to me, these feel very, very safe and steady. And I think one of the other big benefits is they've got these really giant, big hand grips. And they're right and left sided. And once again, for my kind of this joint issues in my hands and my shoulders, and I just find that this is these are pretty comfortable. The other thing is they have these kind of swivelly saddles here. They're kind of a smooshy, rubbery material. Um, just kind of a nice, a nice ride and the fact that they move with you a little bit. I also happen to know people who don't like that sensation. So I think once again, it's, it's crutches are very, very personal preference kind of thing. Say so the downsides to the Moby Legs, um, one is they're kind of just ratchety. They're kind of heavy. Um, I found that generally like they're great when I've been non-weight bearing or minimally weight bearing, but as I get to the points where I'm walking around and bearing weight with crutches, I just find them a little clanky. Um, the other thing is they tend to get a little squeaky after time and I find that I have to put oil in them. 
I think um, the cost can be a deterrent to some people. Just like I said, they do run, I think, about $160, $170 for new ones. Certainly, you can look on Craigslist or ask friends. Uh, but these have definitely been shared with many friends for many hip surgeries. But generally, a, a really nice crutch, a really nice option, and very, very popular in the hip dysplasia communities. So those are the Moby legs.